after being one of the bookies' favourites for promotion, Bolton Wanderers have had quite a tricky first 18 games of the season. They currently find themselves 7th in the league and have just dropped out of those playoff places. They've lost to sides like Cheltenham, Forest Green Rovers and others competing with them to finish in that top 6. Today we're going to look at all of the issues at Bolton and also discover what needs to change to reach the promotion goal that was set at the start of the season. Of course, Bolton Wanderers fans, in the comments section down below, you watch your team week in, week out. Let me know where you feel things need to change in order to get back on track and finish the season in a playoff spot. Of course, if you like this type of content, please do leave a like and subscribe on the road to 4,000 subscribers before Christmas. That would be absolutely amazing. If you want to see more of these club deep dives, let me know which club you'd like to see next. Also, in the comment section down below. Let's start off by looking at the first problem I've identified that's going wrong at Bolton Wanderers. This season, Bolton Wanderers have only scored 19 goals. The current teams in that top six averaging 33.3 goals. That's a difference of 14.3 in total. When looking at the shots, they've currently had 148 shots, meaning 129 of those efforts haven't ended in a goal. That's a current conversion rate of only 9%, averaging 1.1 goal per game. When looking at the expected goals for the table, Bolton Wanderers are exactly in the middle with an expected goals of 12.48. That's not horrendous, but you've got the likes of Burton, Accrington and Wickham all with an higher XG. Burton, Accrington currently struggling in League One and Wickham notoriously not ever having a high XG under Gareth Ainsworth. When looking at actual open play goals, they've only got 12, which sees them 17th on the table. Burton, Accrington, Fleetwood, Cambridge and Bristol Rovers all have more. That for me is a big concern. Then we're looking at open play shots. They have 148, seeing them finish 13th on the table. The stats there, XG, actual goals, shots from open play, all are very, very low and not in and around the sides we currently can see at the top end of the League One table. Now, this graphic is really interesting. You can find all of these on the website called The Analyst, and it shows where a side is dominating an area on the field. It's clear to see Bolton in control across the majority areas of the pitch, other than in and around their opposition's penalty area. Now, that's a big concern. They do not have control of their attacking zone. When looking at some of Bolton's strikers this season, that for me has been one of their biggest downfalls. For example, Dion Charles has one non-penalty goal in 13 starts. He has an 11% conversion rate. He's missed four big chances. And he currently has a non-penalty XG of 0.19 per 90 and an actual goals per 90 of 0.08. Of course, chance creation does play a big part, but his output stats really aren't looking pretty. And again, that does concern me, especially when looking at the issues in the final third. Now, this graph is also really fascinating. Once again, found on the analyst. It shows how many shots it should take for a player to score. It compares non-penalty shots to goals per 90 minutes played. You can see when looking at the graph here, Dion Charles right at the bottom. This graph shows that Dion Charles is averaging one goal every 18 shots. For comparison, Portsmouth's Colby Bishop is averaging one goal every six shots. That just shows the difference in output between the two strikers. Now, it's fair to say Dion Charles does offer a brilliant work rate and his press is a really, really important part of Ian Everett and his style of play but I believe his goal scoring output really is letting Bolton down this season that needs to be resolved So what is that solution? It's important to mention Bavarsa has only started three games so far this season. Fitness, illness and Everett fancying Kunjunga over him have all been reasons why he's had limited minutes. The question then has to be, why is Charles and Kunjunga's partnership not working in the final third? Now many Bolton fans have suggested the pair are quite lightweight and together lack that physical presence up top. So, is that where they're lacking someone like Budvarsson? Could he be the solution to their attacking woes? Or they might just dip into the market in January, like many Bolton fans have suggested. But who can be available? Will it be another loan signing? Or can they bring in someone permanent to partner up with Dion Charles, Budvarsson, or maybe even Kunchungu? A really, really difficult position that Everett finds himself in right now. Let me know, Bolton fans, what would you do? Budvarsson, does he deserve an effort now he's trying to get fully fit? Or do you dip into that window?
we're looking at Bolton from a more broader perspective so far this season, there's one word that comes to mind, and that's inconsistency. They drop points to Port Vale, Cheltenham, Forest Green Rovers, Cambridge United, Oxford United, all clubs lower than currently in the league table. They lost to Plymouth, Sheffield Wednesday, two clubs in and around those playoff places, fairly comfortable and convincing losses. Again, a look at Barnsley and Ipswich, they drew those games, which really, in hindsight, aren't bad results. But we all know, look at Rotherham, look at Wigan sides who got promoted out of League One only last season, they had a level of consistency and that's something that at the moment Bolton are lacking ever and his players have got to iron that out before the end of the season because it can get way too late and you can't be playing catch up because that can be really dangerous really really dangerous indeed Finally, I believe January could be such a significant month for Bolton Wanderers in a positive and negative way. Keeping hold of some of their low knees could be so pivotal when looking at the remainder of the campaign. For example, Connor Bradley played such a huge role in Bolton's system with five goal contributions and four big chances created from right wing back. Things have slowed up recently and question marks will always be there. Has he been exposed? Have they been found out? But he has shown the technical ability and the form to be a top, top player in Skybet League One. There now are rumours of Bradley being recalled in January January from Liverpool and that does put Bolton in a situation where they're in danger of losing such a key key player. Everett remains confident that they won't see Bradley be recalled and he will be a player at Bolton One until the end of the season but articles and fans do have other ideas and are suggesting that it couldn't be the best of Januarys if Bradley is recalled back from his current loan spell. And like I said right at the start, Bolton Wanderers fans, please do let me know. Am I looking at the right things? Am I looking at the wrong things? Give me that feedback in the comment section down below. That really would be much appreciated. Maybe you're not a Bolton fan you want to see another club have a deep dive. Let me know which club that is also in the comments below. Maybe give me a reason behind it as well. I really look forward to doing more of these. I enjoyed the research of this as well. Hopefully the final product is okay. Please leave a like and subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Busy weekend in Skybet League 1. Can Bolton get back on track starting from match week 19.